One of the more interesting developments in the search for intelligent extraterrestrial life has been the recent flood of discoveries of exoplanets. These are planets outside of our solar system orbiting stars other than the sun. To date, astronomers have discovered over 4,000 of these exoplanets with several thousand more candidate planets. Given this news, it might seem inevitable that we'll peer into one of these worlds and catch a glimpse of an alien civilization. Unfortunately, in reality, that is quite a ways off. Most of these exoplanets are discovered by indirect methods, such as measuring how a star's brightness changes as a planet transits across it. There's a few instances where we're able to actually create a composite image, but the resolution of these images leaves something to be desired. To get a high resolution image that might actually show signs of an alien civilization, one would need a telescope larger than Earth itself. Or, as proposed in a long shot NASA proposal, send a satellite telescope on solar sails well past the orbit of Pluto and using the gravitational lensing effect of the sun, create a composite image of an exoplanet that might look something like this. If all goes perfectly well with this plan, the earliest we might hope to get such an image is 2060. It seems unless we get very lucky with an alien radio signal directed right towards us, any such development in the scientific search for intelligent extraterrestrial life is a long ways off. At least, that's what I thought until I truly understood the significance of the 2016 discovery of gravitational waves and our newfound ability to detect them. You may have heard of the discovery, but you'd be forgiven if you've forgotten. The discovery did win the scientists behind it the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics, but the main takeaway from even the official press release was the rather unexciting, scientists find gravitational waves, proving what they already knew. Neutron stars orbit around each other until they eventually merge and form a black hole. Although this confirmation of Einstein's theory is a big deal to physicists, it doesn't seem like a big deal to a lay person. The real news here is barely expounded upon. We just created a completely new way to observe the universe. Before, we could just look at the universe. Now, we can hear the gravitational ripples that astronomical objects produce when they orbit each other. It's like we had been watching a fireworks show with only our sense of sight. Now, suddenly we can hear. We can hear the loud booms that come shortly after a visual explosion. We would have predicted that, but sometimes we might hear a loud boom or a whirl where there is no visual counterpart. Scientists have already picked up on some of these unexplained gravity wave noises, and expectations are very high that in the coming years, we will hear new noises yet that may challenge our very understanding of the universe. The intuition for this new tool does take a while to get used to. In fact, understanding what gravity waves are takes a while to wrap one's mind around. Gravity waves really are quite analogous to sound waves. Just as sound waves are ripples through our atmosphere, gravitational waves are ripples through the fabric of space-time. A single object alone doesn't create gravity waves. It's not as if the Earth is kept in the sun's orbit by gravity waves. Rather, the sun bends space-time, causing the Earth to fall in its orbit. This is just the effect of gravity. However, as the Earth orbits the sun, the space-time in this area is constantly in flux. The Earth and the Sun are both in motion and both warp space-time around them. This disturbance in space-time caused by the orbit emanates through the fabric of space-time in what we call a gravitational wave. Because the Earth revolves around the Sun every 365 days, the Earth-Sun orbit produces a wave that has a frequency of 365 days. As you can imagine, the universe is brimming with these gravity waves. 
just as the Earth and the Sun produce a gravity wave, the moon revolving around the Earth produces a gravity wave with a frequency of 27 days. Likewise, every orbiting body everywhere in the universe produces such a wave. Currently, our gravity ears lack the capability of hearing such low frequency gravity waves. LIGO and Virgo can only detect very high pitched waves, ones with frequencies of around a tenth of a second to a ten thousandth of a second. Because these tools can only hear such high frequencies, they can only detect massive objects that are spinning around each other extremely fast, about as fast as your blender. Astronomical objects only get going this fast as they spin closer and closer to each other in the eventual collision course. This is what our current gravity observatories are trained to hear. The recording of such a collision is what won the 2017 Nobel Prize. It's also why you only hear of gravity observatory events and not of a constant gravity soundscape. We can currently only hear the lead up to these gravity explosions. We are still deaf to the constant hum of stable astronomical orbits. For now. The LIGO and Virgo are absolute marvels of engineering. They use laser beams to measure changes of less than an atom over distances over miles. This video gives a much better technical overview than I can, and future gravity observatories will only get better. In about 10 years, the first of the next generation of gravity observatories will be launched. This new observatory will be space-based and 1,000 times larger than the Earth-based instruments. Called the LISA, once operational, we will be able to hear gravity waves with a frequency of around one second. While still a much higher pitch than the low drone produced by most planetary orbits, this will allow us to hear many more cosmic rhythms. And unlike electromagnetic radiation, such as radio waves and light, gravity waves go right through objects unaffected. Giant clouds of dust or massive star clusters will not obscure a gravity signal behind them. They are also omnidirectional. And whereas electromagnetic waves and the effect of gravity itself degrade exponentially, gravity waves only degrade linearly, allowing us to detect long range signals despite any visual obfuscations. These properties have led many to believe that gravity waves and not electromagnetic waves should be the focus of our search for extraterrestrial signals. If an incredibly technologically advanced civilization wanted to announce itself, perhaps instead of polluting the cosmos with radio or light beacons, which would be quickly degrading and blocked and thus invisible to a good portion of the galaxy, an unobtrusive way to announce one's presence throughout the galaxy would be by creating a unambiguously unnatural gravity wave signal. Theoretical physicist Merrick Abramowitz and his colleagues think they know precisely where such a beacon would be located and what it would look like. In their paper, A Galactic Center Gravitational Wave Messenger, Merrick and fellow authors hypothesize that the natural place to put such a beacon would be around the black hole at the center of the galaxy. All sufficiently advanced civilizations in the galaxy would certainly become aware of this central black hole, making it a natural galactic meeting point or bulletin board. To post a you are not alone in the universe message, all one would need to do is generate unambiguously unnatural gravity waves from this area. The authors claim the simplest way to do this would be to position a mass around the size of Jupiter in the intermost stable orbit to this black hole. An object that size in that orbit could not happen naturally, but could be engineered by a sufficiently advanced civilization. Such a beacon could even outlive the civilization which placed it there, making it more of a gravestone than a sign of life. Such knowledge would leave us with deep philosophical questions, but Lisa could also detect a different kind of signal which would have a much more immediate concern. 
gravity waves from an unknown source from within our very solar system. We might even be seeing such signals in our Earth-based observatories already, but throwing the data out as random noise. There is a lot of random noise, caused by anything from cars driving up to the isolated observatories to tremors coming from within the Earth itself. These apparatuses are incredibly sensitive, and despite the best efforts to keep them isolated from the environmental noise, noise does get in. As such, scientists looking at the Earth-based data are looking for the signal within the noise. They are able to do this because they know what they are looking for, the characteristic pattern of huge objects orbiting faster and faster until they eventually collide. If a signal is detected that doesn't fit this pattern, it is thrown out as likely noise. Once LISA is launched though, it will be operating in space. Here, there will be practically no environmental contamination. Any unexplained signals will need to be studied and explained. So if LISA happens to detect gravity waves being generated from random spots around Earth or even within our solar system, we'll be forced to accept the most likely explanation that the tales of gravity warp drives are indeed true. These hypothetical craft were proven to be theoretically possible in 1994 by Miguel Ocubier, and since then a number of further papers have been published refining his proposed idea of a craft that bends space-time to achieve faster-than-light travel or close to it for the occupants within. If such drives were operating in our solar system, they will almost certainly create gravity waves that could be detected by LISA. Now, this might be a stretch, but I think this might actually be what is driving the latest in government UFO disclosure. The Tic Tac UFO stories were first disclosed by the New York Times in late 2017, just months after the Nobel Prize for Gravity Wave Detection was awarded, and a little under a year since the proposal of the space-based observatory, LISA, was announced. The Tic Tac object that Navy pilots described seeing seemed to operate as one would expect a gravity craft might. And the Tic Tac-like shape matches the most recent depictions of these theoretical craft. Is the government trying to warm the public up to the idea of exotic gravity-based craft before the scientific community exposes it as cold, hard fact? The timing alone suggests that this very well may be the case. If true, not only can we be excited for the launch of LISA and the new perspective of the universe it will bring, but also potentially much more UFO disclosure as the government tries to beat the scientific community to the punch. These are just some of the known unknowns when it comes to our future in gravity wave observations. As our technology in gravity observatories increases, eventually we may find ourselves with a complete sonar map of the universe to compare to our visual map. There may be things that we can't even imagine lying in wait for us to find. One way or another, answers are coming. Thanks for watching Rather Be Squidding. I hope you found this video interesting and left you excited about the future of gravitational astronomy. Do you think that LISA will detect alien life in the next 15 years? Or will it just further convince us that we are isolated? please leave a comment with your thoughts below. And if you did think this was interesting, please like the video and share. And be sure to subscribe for more Rather Be Squidding. I'll see you next time.